Red Dead Redemption 2 was inspired by a lot of real life people and places, and here are all the people that inspired Red Dead Redemption 2 characters. 95% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so subscribe if you want more content like this. Angelo Bronte was one of Red Dead Redemption 2's more interesting antagonists and actually was pretty intelligent, outwitting Dutch and the gang multiple times. Bronte was likely based on Charles Matronga, who was also an Italian mob boss in New Orleans during the 1880s to 1920s, New Orleans being the place San Denis was based on, and just like Angelo Bronte, ran one of the first American mafia families with the Matronga family in New Orleans. In the 1890s, the Matronga family actually fought a mob war against the other main crime family in New Orleans, which resulted in the police chief being killed. Very different to Bronte, who actually, you know, basically owned the police, but this led to Matronga being arrested and eventually him and his goons being acquitted of the crime which led to a lynching of 11 of 14 of the defendants so basically all the defendants except for matronga died but he did survive and vowed to never fight against police ever again and it kind of set a precedent for all the mafia families to not mess with the police because it would set a bad precedent but he didn't really have the same like collaboration with the police like bronte did but he still was a very powerful guy and yeah he inspired bronte up next, we've got Bertram, the big funny looking guy who's part of Miss Marjorie's, I guess, freak show, if you want to call it that, her traveling act. And he's actually based off a similar real life person named Schlitzy. Schlitzy was also popular as a similar traveling entertainment act, similar to Bertram, but instead of being this absolutely huge and hulking guy with this like uncontrollable temper, he was actually a really tiny guy. He was actually four feet tall due to the disease microcephaly, which Bertram also is likely supposed to have an RDR2. It basically just makes you like have the intellect of a toddler and makes you extremely stupid and just like you can't really do much and it makes you also really small. Also, your just brain is not fully developed. Basically, it's just a terrible disease to have and Bertram likely has it in the game, but they made him big instead of small, which I guess kind of makes sense. I feel like big is like even funnier in its own way because it doesn't make him seem like a diminutive person. And they also have the dwarf here. So, you know, Slitsy was also famous for being cast in a movie called Freaks about people with disabilities that looked freaky to the general public. It was really like a horror movie, but it was just about them looking freaky, which is just a crazy thing in general. And I do think it's good that Rockstar did like make him a big guy because it gives a little bit of diversity in there, I guess, if you want to call it freak show. And I don't know, I just feel like it makes him a little bit cooler as a character because he can beat the shit out of Arthur if he really needed to be. Albert Mason is one of my favorite strangers in RDR2, and you can meet him in the Stranger Mission Arcadia for Amateurs, where you assist him in taking wildlife photography. He's based on Ansel Adams, a photographer known for his landscape photos of the American West. He was especially known for his pictures of Yosemite, which inspired Big Valley in RDR2, but Albert Mason isn't really focused on the landscape. He's more focused on the wildlife photography, where you can see like he always wants to take photos of the wolves, like of all these animals it's like you always have to help him doing that but it's a little bit different Ansel Adams did a bunch of stuff in black and white and it was always of like the landscape but while Ansel Adams really wasn't born by 1899 when the game took place they're basically like based on the same person because if you look at them Mason looks very similar to Adams and basically did the same thing as Adams so I would assume that Rockstar definitely took some inspiration from Ansel Adams and Ansel Adams just has some amazing photographs if you do want to check them out I feel like they're absolutely beautiful and they really take in like the landscape of the American West if you're into the whole Red Dead Redemption thing and the American West you definitely have to go check them out. Black Bell is the woman gunslinger you can meet in the Stranger Mission, the noblest of men and a woman. And she's a badass that you can help escape from the people who are trying to kill her. Just Arthur and John can help her fight them off. Bell Star was also similarly a famous woman gunslinger like Black Bell. And besides sharing like similarities in terms of their names, she also ran with a gang called the James Younger Gang, just like Black Bell did with like her gang with Emmett Granger and you know all the guys that you have to shoot with, with them. But Unlike Belle, however, she met a violent end when she was ambushed and killed two days before her 41st birthday. And this murder, along with the case being unsolved for, like, even to this day, it's unsolved, led to Belle Star becoming a celebrity. They, they printed some novel, like, a year after she died, and she just immediately rocketed into celebrity and became, like, this really famous woman gunslinger because there weren't really any woman gunslingers. So, like, when there was and when they were badass, they just shot into celebrity, even if it wasn't really all true. But either way, Bell Star and Black Bell are clearly, like, a little bit inspired by each other. 
Charles Chatonet is one of the funniest characters in RDR2 with a very weird and eccentric style of painting and just overall he's just this really eccentric and funny guy. You meet him in the stranger's mission the artist way and he was likely inspired by Paul Gauguin. Gauguin was a French painter similar to Chatonet painting in a pretty similar style with lots of naked women of course and faced criticism about his art during his life like Chatonet. Gauguin left France for the South Pacific and actually settled in Tahiti. Why couldn't Dutch have done that himself? Either way, Gauguin also had many mistresses instead of his wife. And while he might have not had a beat down from one of his mistress's husbands, like Chatonet did, was thought to have syphilis at the time of his death. So he definitely was getting out there and was getting pretty freaky. After his death, Gauguin's paintings shot up in value, and now his paintings literally sell for tens of millions of dollars, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars. Either way, if Chatonet had that kind of luck, that man, I mean, I guess he wasn't getting rich, but the people who were selling his paintings were getting rich after his death because hundreds of millions of dollars is crazy. Chester Damson is a singer who Arthur and Trelawney robbed during the mission Friends in Very Low Places. Trelawney convinces her to leave the stagecoach by flattering her because no one had probably flattered her that well before because her voice is absolutely terrible. She was likely based on Florence Foster Jenkins, who was a rich person and then eventually became a famous opera singer, known for literally being the worst opera singer of all time. If you don't believe me, look it up, she sucks. At her performances, she would literally control ticket sales, and yet often her friends would have to drown out the crowd's laughs at her performances with their applause. So they would just be clapping the whole time while everyone else was laughing at her. Later in her life, she eventually allowed regular audiences into one of her performances, and she was ripped to shreds by her opponents and the reporters who basically were like this this woman sucks and she was basically laughed off stage and you know it hurt her for the rest of her life and then she basically didn't sing as much after the fact because everyone ripped her to shreds and she kind of deserved it because she absolutely sucked either way though you know it is a really interesting inspired by character and it's like this is the stuff that rockstar put into their games because this is such a small detail that didn't really need to be there and either way they they do it with these such cool inspirations from different characters and whatnot I know most RDR2 players have been in San Denis and seen that absolutely annoying woman protester who's always advocating for women's rights. I know we gotta like allow women's rights to be a thing, but like she's really annoying in the game or at least has seen the video where the guy ties her up and feeds her to an alligator. But most RDR2 players don't know she was actually based on Sophia Duleep Singh, who was a women's rights protester in England and actually the daughter of a former Indian king and the goddaughter of Queen Victoria. She famously would protest women in England paying taxes, saying basically the same thing as the American founding fathers, no taxation without representation. At least in real life, she didn't seem as annoying as Rockstar made her counterpart in the game, but in both real life and in the game, they would always both famously protest alone and just kind of tell anyone a piece of their mind. And I do respect it because eventually women were able to vote and we're not getting taxed without any representation. W. Sophia. Norris Forsyth is a character in Red Dead Redemption 2 who you can see giving out pamphlets to people advocating that his race is superior. If you shoot him, actually nothing will happen in the game and the police don't care at all which is really funny because it's just clearly the right thing to do you might as well just get your gun and just you know bust him full of holes because he's just a bad person but Norris is actually clearly modeled after a certain German leader from the 1940s whose last name rhymes with Schmittler but he's also modeled on Henry McLaughlin whose ideas on eugenics inspired that very same German leader whose last name rhymes with Schmittler he also started a sterilization program, Henry McLaughlin, where the government would sterilize people that they believed to be mentally deficient, starting a pretty bad precedent for eugenics. And, you know, if this was in the game, Bertram really would not be able to have any kids. Same thing with the dwarf. They basically did all these things, like everything that Henry McLaughlin did, the German leader kind of took and was like, whoa, what if we do this to more people? And basically started a really bad precedent, which led to the Second World War basically a really bad thing and Henry McLaughlin was a very bad guy so you know if you do see this guy in San Denis please put a few hole holes in his chest or his head or whatnot because he definitely deserves it Edmund Lowry Jr. is a serial killer and the main character of the side mission American Dreams you can start this mission by finding one of his dismembered corpses throughout the map which each of which contain a piece of the map leading back to his hideout 
Lowry is likely inspired by Stephen Richards, who is a serial killer that was active in Nebraska and Iowa, two regions that inspired the Heartlands where Edmund Lowry Jr. was active in Red Dead Redemption 2. Similarly to Lowry, Richards became famous as a serial killer, but mostly due to once caught how he felt no remorse for his victims. Even as he literally killed an entire family after he came out of jail, he like was trying to buy something off this family and you know, it was like too much for him. So he literally killed the entire family, the mom who was buying the land off of and her two kids. And unlike Lowry, Richards didn't lead police with clues in his dismembered victim's bodies, of course, but he eventually did get caught. And I believe he was the first person to be executed by the death penalty in Iowa or Nebraska, one of the two of them, and is like known for that nowadays. But either way, Lowry is way more of a character and way more of a weird guy in Red Dead Redemption 2. I feel like it's really cool that they were kind of inspired by this guy, but made it just way more over the top and way more of like a rock star. Like it's got all these weird things where he puts the the note and the clue in his dismembered victims' bodies, which is just crazy in general. But I don't know. I feel like it's just a really cool like homage to that and just cool to have like a little real life reference in this stranger mission. Evelyn Miller is a character that's referenced throughout Red Dead Redemption 2 and you can actually meet him throughout Red Dead Redemption 2 starting with when Arthur meets him when Miller is with Rains Falls and Eagles Fly is talking to the mayor and he tells Arthur to go steal the documents for Rains Fall and Eagle Flies. John can later then encounter him in Tall Trees with the stranger mission the American Inferno burnt out where Miller has resigned to writing the book and Miller eventually dies from neglecting to eat or drink while writing his book. This is the only mission in the game that John can only access and Arthur can't actually access it himself, but Evelyn Miller is closely based on Henry David Thoreau as Rockstar basically copied him bar for bar. It's basically saying, oh, can I change your homework up, but just change it up a little bit. It's the same thing there. Thoreau was an anarchist holding very similar views to the ones that Dutch holds in RDR2, basically held the same positions as Miller did in the game. And overall just had a very similar look out on life as Miller does and as like Dutch does in that case because like Dutch just kind of read a lot of Evelyn Miller books and was like oh my god I'm an intellectual now it's kind of the same thing there and Thoreau also died after working on re revising his works and basically accepted death after not eating as much as he should have he's just really weak after he was just like oh my god I've been working this whole time and I just haven't been eating it's the same thing as Evelyn Miller just changed up a little bit but it is a real cool homage that they did throw it in to like you know like oh if you know you know with Henry David Thoreau and I just think it is cool that they have like an anarchist view which really led to you know what Dutch was thinking and how he, he like held his outlook on life which was really influenced by Evelyn Miller. Either way though, it is a really cool homage to Henry David Thoreau, who was a pretty great writer. Leviticus Cornwall is probably the longest running villain in Red Dead Redemption 2, along with the man he paid, Mr. Andrew Milt. Cornwall honestly is just a rich guy who wants Dutch dead because he robbed his train a couple times and he's just been overall disrespectful. But like Cornwall just had enough money just to say, fuck it, Pinkerton, just go get him. But Cornwall is actually based on a lot of different robber barons of the earliest early 20th century including John Rockefeller, Cornelius Vanderbilt, Leland Stanford, and Andrew Carnegie but he's more likely based on E.H. Harriman's portrayal in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Harriman was a railroad owner who was robbed by Butch Cassidy's gang multiple times and sent the Pinkertons after their gang mirroring Cornwall and Dutch's many engagements but Harriman did not meet a similar violent end in real life though and died a natural death but i think also the fact that dutch and arthur are also somewhat based on butch cassidy and the sundance kid gives this theory i guess a lot more credence where it's like he is definitely based off of rockefeller vanderbilt stanford and carnegie but i think harriman probably is a top guy just because it does make more sense in terms of sending the pinkertons after them and his relationship with dutch and like the relationship between Bush. Butch Cassidy and Harriman in at least the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Marco Dragic is one of the smartest and coolest characters in all of Red Dead Redemption 2 with him building pawn submarine weapons and even his own robot son. His story is depressing with his complete happiness of building his son to the juxtaposition of him being killed by his son the next time we see him which is a different spin on the classic Frankenstein tale. Marco Dragic is also a clear ripoff of Nikola Tesla 
especially when they're both like Eastern European, clearly like Drogic might not be from Serbia like Tesla was, but he's still from the same area there. And especially with their laboratory as they're kind of like up high in the mountains away from everyone, but still being like close enough to society in general. But Drogic also literally has a Tesla tower, like the exact Tesla tower in at his laboratory so it's like clear that there is some inspiration there which he uses to power his robot son and was also supposedly screwed over by american just like how nikola tesla was screwed over by thomas edison who kind of set back the entire world's electricity usage by like 20 years when they use like he's a lot of propaganda to push his like dc current over ac current which was pushed by tesla at that point and now everyone uses ac current so it just it just pushed everyone back by so much time but if there was a tesla influence character in the red dead redemption world do you think there's a drogic model a in the present day rockstar universe because there's there must be an elon musk character as well so do you think he made drogic motors similar to that or do you think that's not a thing at all either way it is really funny that they do have a tesla character in the game and i just think it's really interesting like the whole drogic story and how he built this son and it like all worked and he's just so happy about it and it just all changes so quickly and it's just so sad to see him just like dead after the fact the Aberdeen pig farm is one of the coolest random encounters in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's also extremely creepy somewhat. When passing by their farm, the Aberdeens ask you to have a meal with them, and if you accept, your player is drugged and robbed of all their money. They are also siblings who killed their parents and now are lovers, which is also just insane in a whole nother way. You then have to go back and kill them and then take the money back to get your money back. And this is one of the only ways to transfer the money from Arthur to John. So I know a lot of people do let Arthur get, you know, taken advantage of right before the end of the game, just so he can pass his money on to John. But in real life, the Bender family who inspired the Aberdeens included the parents who were also in on their murders, which were mostly committed by the son, who was known to be pretty stupid, and the daughter, who was smart and attractive, similarly to the Aberdeen siblings. Just like in the game, these siblings were thought to be married to each other, but I'm pretty sure that's like inconclusive. They don't really know. They just were assumed to be because they're probably extremely close with each other and doing some weird stuff. They also would kill their victims while they were eating, similarly to how the Aberdeens drug you while you're eating, but they would lure guests instead as posing as an inn. So they'd be like, oh, we've got free lodging for you, or you can lodge if you pay money. And then they'd kill them using a trap door in the basement, which is kind of crazy. But when they were eventually found out to be killers, they escaped and no one can prove their fates to this day. But I think in real life, like I think the Aberdeens are a little bit cooler, but I do wish that they like actually killed you in game. I feel like it's kind of stupid that they just drug you and take your money because if they're not like taking your guns and everything, why would you not just go back and rob them? I feel like that's like not an oversight in the game, but it's like, come on, like if, if you're allowing us to have our guns back after the fact, why would we not go back and take our money back? I don't know. It's kind of stupid and kind of like a weird oversight by Rockstar in that way. But I understand because if they killed you, it'd be kind of like a stupid encounter. Either way, though, it is a really cool thing. You definitely need to check out the Aberdeen Pig Farm if you haven't already in your Red Dead Redemption 2 playthrough. If you guys did make it this far in the video, thank you. And there should be some other videos popping up and definitely click on those if you are interested in those.